Hi, everybody. How are you on this Lenten Thursday? <laughs> I kind of lost. I kind of lost track of my days here for a little bit. It's a hectic time in a pastor's life when you have the annual meeting coming up and you're kind of ministering to two churches. <laughs> Thank goodness their meetings aren't on the same day. I would have a. I, I would need. I would need a lot of hot baths and Epsom salts. I think. <laughs> But they aren't, so it's all good, and uh, and yeah, so here I am. Um, one of the things that I'm doing, you know, I encouraged you to have your own theme or your own practice that you were going to work on. Just a minute, I'll be right back. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, and after all that, it was a spam call. So, but you know how I was uh, asking you to have your own discipline, your own practice throughout Lent, well, one of mine is praying for people by name. Um, and I do that throughout the day. I, I often do it, but I'm trying to be more intentional about doing it because I'm reminded that Isaiah, wait, I wrote it down, 43, one, uh, 43 verse 1 is where God says to Israel, for I have called you by name and you are mine. And there's something about being called by name and known by your name. So I've been uh, praying for people this morning by name, individuals. And then it dawned on me how, um, I mean, I start with my, my family and my children and pray for them by name. Then I was thinking about all of the parents around the world and grandparents and aunts and uncles and neighbors and people who pray for our children all around the world and it doesn't matter how old they are you know you could be talking about children who are in their 40s 50s and even 60s and still parents pray for them and we want what's best for them and to keep them safe and that led me to wonder i wonder how many people are praying for me And then that led me to think about all of the people that I pray for. They're not all people that I like. I know, hard to believe that there are people I don't like, but they're not all people who I admire or would want to be with, but I do pray for them. And the question arises, what do you pray for? When I was much younger, of course, I prayed for what I wanted. <laughs> Make them nicer. Have them, help them to understand me better. <laughs> and then I got older and I realized, no, God doesn't work like that. Because God is their God too. And God has called them by name. And God loves them. So then my next step was to think about, well, what could I pray or pray for them? Mm, thy will be done, yeah, maybe. And then it brought me around to another part of my spiritual development where I realized that how presumptuous of me to pray for anyone. Really, I should just be offering up prayer and love uh, to the universe to place it wherever it needs to go because really I would rather God put it where it needs to go than be directed by Oh, you need to pray pray for Sally Jones down the street Well, maybe Sally doesn't need all that energy right now and you know, maybe Mary Smith does in some other part of the world So then for many years in my life, I was just offering up prayer in general I think that uh, I've, I'm coming around on this spiral journey. Remember, it's not exactly the same place. That would be a circle, but a uh, slightly different perspective. So it's kind of a spiral journey. Things are familiar, but my perspective is different. And I'm realizing maybe, I haven't fully formed this yet, but I'm thinking that maybe, um, oh, I'll ask you, is sending love to someone is surrounding them in the light the same as praying for them? What does it mean to pray for someone? 
Is it just to think good thoughts? Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Hackneyed. What does it mean? Does it mean to send up good intentions for them? Is that presumptuous? To place my energies on someone who might not want them? I like the Quaker phrase, and I use it frequently, I'll hold you in the light. I think that's a, a nice image. But I have called you by name. Is God the only one who can call us by name? I feel called back to myself by my friends all the time, friends and family, friends who have become family, where I will have maybe slipped off my center, you know, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down, slipped off my center and in getting rewrited, it's my friends who call me often back to my upright position, back to my center. They remind me of who I am whose I am. How does that relate to prayer? If we pray for ourselves, who are we praying for? What are we praying for? Are we praying that God's will will be done? Are we praying for strength to endure something? Are we praying for enlightenment? Are we praying for direction? Are we offering prayers of praise? Are we lamenting? What is prayer? It certainly doesn't have to be a sedentary thing. Let us bow our heads and pray. You know, prayer could be a walk in the woods. Prayer could be a friend's voice or face on the phone. I was talking, I was talking with my, I guess it was a form of prayer. <laughs> my um, seminary roommate and I have uh, reconnected. <laughs> we went for the first 25 years without talking at all. I'm, no reason, just life took us in different ways. And on our 25th anniversary, <laughs> our reunion, we both went and we found each other. <laughs> it was like, where have you been? Oh my God, we've been catching up for the last five or six years ever since then. Now, most weeks, we FaceTime at some point. Um, she has a church in, uh, on the Connecticut shoreline. And um, yesterday when we connected, she said, I just, I love your, your text messages, and sometimes I just read them over and over again to just bathe in them. And I said, I thought I was the only one who did that. I mean, I have some of hers printed out and posted around me just to keep me grounded and remind me of who I am. I said, I thought I was the only stalker. And she said, no, I'm stalking you too. And we decided that we're sister stalkers. <laughs> so is that a form of prayer? That sort of connection where we offer each other up to God and we rejoice and celebrate in each other? What is prayer? I don't mean a book definition. I mean your definition. What's What's your definition of prayer? And do you pray for other people by name? And do you, how do you feel about that? Is that a, a good thing? Or do you ever feel like you're imposing something on them? Um, do you feel like you're trying to direct God too much? That's one of my problems. I'm thinking, God, I want, to, I want all the disclaimers, you know, God, if it doesn't offend you and, and if you, if it's the right thing to do, you know, so it, it can get kind of complicated, but as we start this Lenten season and we are all working on our own paths and our own journeys and our own disciplines, I invite you to just entertain some of those thoughts. And if you want to write me about them, I'd love to hear uh, and we can exchange, you know, email me and, and you can get to me through the website on the end cap of this. Thanks for joining me for this prayerful pause of the pastor. Not too sure it was very prayerful, but it's about prayer. So there you are. And I'm Pastor Deb Swift of South Presbyterian Church in a snowy and frigid Rochester, New York. Um, I'm pastor, at, did I say that? Yes, South Presbyterian Church. I'm still thinking about prayer. <laughs> Maybe I should be praying, praying more for myself in these prayerful pauses. Anyway, 
I hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time. Laugh a little. It's it's good to laugh. And and God, our God is a God of laughter, right? All right, I'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye for now. <laughs>